Squash Excel Pro is an elite team that work hard to train, play and run squash events on our journey to climb the world rankings. Like, subscribe, comment, pick up some of our merch on Teespring. And now about to get underway in this, the second men's semi-final. It is Joel Ascot. No, it's not. He actually uh, played in the first semi-final. Joel Ascot will be joining me very shortly. <laughs> Joel will be joining me very shortly. It is uh, Timur Chalisi in the red, and he is up against Elijah Thomas. <laughs> and uh, a bit to see who will take on Lawamba Chalisi in the final tomorrow. Of course, the women's final, where that will feature Emma Miller up against uh, Abby Palmer. Emma Miller, the defending champion here at Eden Epson. And. Uh, this is the third game. I'll make that the fourth game. My goodness, we've had a long day already. It's only the fourth match. So we get underway. A nice shot there, just dropping, cutting underneath, taking away the pace and the bounce by Elijah Thomas. And that was the first point, it took a while. These two are going to play that sort of style all the way through. And I've got to remember that uh, wearing the goggles still because he is a junior, 18 years old, Elijah Thomas. And he won't be 19 until I think it's around about November or certainly later in the year. set up there from Timo Chalisi. He had all the time in the world and they had to put his opponent in two mines. Am I going to drop it? Am I going to drive through it? In the end it took the pace off and meant that Elijah Thomas was just a little too late to flick it across the court. And uh, this is a tournament two of a series of five. We had Henderson last week, the Challenger Tournament. Next week it's the Auckland Open. And that will be televised, the finals anyway, on Sky Sport. So it'll be great at the finals next Sunday. Ooh, just skimming over their line. So yeah, as we said, the finals of the Auckland Open, Barford and Thompson Auckland Open at North Shore Club, televised next weekend. After that, tournament in Fokotane, and then the final in the series is at Royal Oak. A satellite for the men and a challenger for the women. There is also a tournament, Ooh, getting himself in trouble there, Elijah Thomas. And uh, as we said, there is also a tournament in later in March in Morrinsville, which will be a men's PSA challenger. So plenty of events for these players. They may get sick of each other. However, at least they've got an opportunity to earn ranking points and prize money as well. Uh, it's the same players with a few added in here and there. However, if you're getting prize money and uh, PSA ranking points, that's all that matters. about tripping on himself there or the back foot of too much Lucy. Oh, nice power there. Uh, good shot. <laughs> and, uh, and that was Elijah Thomas just commenting on where he almost tripped. Just asking if uh, the official saw that. And the answer was, well, you kept on playing. Uh, let's just abbreviate the, the comments. And the 
This is uh, Elijah Thomas's home courts, Eden Epson. Also the home courts of uh, Carol Owens, former world champion, and coaches out of here. So Elijah Thomas just needs to keep his head here. Yeah, I mean, he got that point, but the thing is, he just needs to keep his head, not get too worked up about any decisions not particularly going his way. He knows how he can play against these particular players. Tim, well, he's played on many times. Tim uh, had a, a very good contest against ooh, against uh, Evan Williams last week in one of the earlier rounds at Henderson at the Challenger. In fact, uh, Evan Williams had a real battle all the way through that tournament and still won't manage to win. Don't forget, feel free to send through any comments. We certainly had a few during the women's second semi-final. Good play there from Elijah Thomas, but also good recovery from Timwa. position uh, too much Elise but just pushed it a little bit too much to move forward Elijah Thomas and play it deep. Coming off the wall, the ball stayed low and tough or too much Elisi to get to it and play a decent shot. Oh, <laughs> that was assertive. Least you just kept this lead all the way through. Every time it's uh, that Elijah Thomas is having to fight back, certainly having to stay in the points to actually get there. There's not too many unforced errors as yet from Timwa. Oh, there's one though from Elijah Thomas. Last night as well from Timo Chilisi. Just a couple of stray on force in each set, each game. And give an opportunity. And well, we'll let you decide on that one. It was I think some people would argue uh, either way on that. Feel free to let us know. the question a couple of times as well.
There's a few people in the crowd just doing their own demonstration of what happened then. So just a couple of calls coming. We're still in the first game, don't forget. And you've got that nice little buffer for Tenwa Chalisi. And with the back answer from the forehand side, it moves across quite nicely. Both players using the backhand wall. Oh, nice switch across though. And just stays in. Oh. Yeah, nice shot. <laughs> and a great answer there from <laughs> Roger Thomas. Saves one grain ball. Oh, there's one of those unforced errors. Now, unfortunately for Tim Watch, at least he does usually two or three of those a game. And it's something he's going to have to cut out as he tries to move up the rankings a bit higher. Still got the opportunity to win the first game though. So the stroke, well that's a couple of, firstly an upward steer, then the stroke against Tim Chalisi. He's, I don't think he has too many people to blame but himself on that one. Certainly got in the way. And a fair lead on that one though. A little bit of pressure. Nice little comeback. Using the advantage of those unforced and then the stroke. It's a good shot. Would we have given a stroke on that one? No, I don't think so. Ball was coming pretty quick. Okay, so there you go in the end. <laughs> a couple of questionable calls at the end of that first game. 11-9 it is for Tenwa Chalisi taking the first game of this, the second semi-final. The winner of this particular match goes on to play the Wamba Chalisi in the, the final tomorrow. Well, an interesting finish to the first game of this, the second men's semi-final. Tenwa Chalisi up against... Uh, Elijah Thomas, and it was 11-9, albeit that the final few points were fairly tight. And uh, Joel Ascott is uh, just joined me, just warm down stretching. Mm. And uh, you're, you're, you're okay, it was a loss, and your loss was straight games, but it wasn't in, the, in so many senses. It, it could have been four or five the way it sort of uh, played out. I know it's unfortunate yeah. when you lose, but it was a tight straight game. I think um, the last set I fell off, I definitely lost that, but right. those first two. I feel like he won them, I didn't really lose them. Um, but not much in it at all, but, um, but that's the difference at, at the level now. Everyone's so even, or at least me and Louis seem to be getting a lot closer. So. But no, he's the best he's played in the last two weeks, and he's, he's just improving every match now since that Henderson tournament. Um, yeah, so I think the thing is good. with uh, the one but last week, he was pretty disappointed in what, what occurred there, beaten by uh, yeah. Elijah. And uh, whereas for you last week, you, you played probably from what it seems to me, you played the, the top of your game for the semi-finals and for most of the final. Yeah, again, probably the same kind of thing. <laughs> In that fifth set last week, I just didn't have anything left. Yeah, yeah, you, you, your legs were gone no, or your yeah. mind was gone. I right? think today was a little bit different. I fell in the legs, but um, last week I figured it out. I, I, didn't, I didn't eat for almost three and a half hours or four right. hours um, because I warmed up for 45 minutes and then yeah. the match itself was, I think, 84 or oh, five yeah, minutes. So I didn't, yeah. So I needed a gel or something, so I came a bit more prepared this week, but fortunately the legs went out. But that's the thing, I mean, do you, how much 
And out. How much do you actually eat before an important match? Yeah, if it's you, your one match of the day. I'm one of those people I can either, I'll either eat like three, four hours before and then have a snack or I'll, I can eat like 90 minutes before my match and then, you know, give it 45 minutes to digest. That's the type of, it just, just depends. Because sometimes Time nerves, of day as well, time of day as well. Yeah, yeah well, that's a good point. Because sometimes nerves, if you eat, it just makes your stomach feel yeah. either heavy or your nerves just get I mean, to you. At, at nationals, I remember specifically, I, I barely ate for the whole, really? a whole few days. I just, yeah, because it just the, those whole just nerves. Just the, the nerves and the anxiety of nationals, it's just like, yeah, really tough to eat, but you have to, you have to almost force yourself to do it. Yeah, it's interesting how different people cope or find yeah you know, I find one person who does not have that problem is, is the Thames yeah the man loves a snack yeah, this is a great release oh yeah he's milked that one but it was it was there to be taken these two um, had a lot of encounters towards yeah. the end of last year didn't they um, admittedly they were in yeah a lot of them were in the kind of the play draw not necessarily the main draw but it doesn't matter oh, no, um, so it'd be interesting to see um well, we can see already Tim was trying to. He's out, I think he's probably got a little bit of the unfinished finish business with those matches. I think there was three or four matches, and Elijah beat him three love at one point. So I think one of the problems that Tim still has is that generally most sets, most games, he gives away two, sometimes three unforced errors that are just yeah you know, total shots he didn't need to hit. And, yeah, and when you're playing against somebody who's in form, you, you just can't afford to do yeah. that, can you? We've all got different tendencies, yeah. and Tim was is often to go short. That's a good example right there. Um, he feels like he has to, has to do something when he really doesn't. And no. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to say sitting back here, but you can see like often when there's a opponent under a huge amount of pressure, and then <laughs> yeah. you feel like he has to do something. And it's like Tim will just keep the pressure on him. Yeah. You, you don't, and I mean, then you don't have to do whatever Ooh, stays in. Especially with Elijah, too. Elijah's one of those players, he kind of just, he'll keep, keep himself in it. And he won't really force anything. You do have to beat him. Oh, um, but I think that's why they have so many close encounters sometimes, is the contrast. Yeah, yeah. Well, talking about uh, aging and uh, also the weight loss, there was an mm. uh, All Blacks player, um, he was the number eight for the All Blacks, Rodney Sowialo, uh, mm. that was in the early 2000s maybe. He, in training for a test match, would lose five kilos. Now, for the All Blacks dietitian and coaches, they just found it so difficult to actually, they, they wanted him to put on weight almost, yeah. but he was losing five kilos because of a week of training wow. before a match. Yeah, I remember like weighing myself once before and after a, a session in um, in the Gold Coast in January, which <laughs> if anyone's been to the Gold Coast in January, especially on a squash court with no air conditioning, it's not very pleasant. I lost about 3.4 kilos, I remember. Um, so but you put it straight back on too. It's just, yeah, it's, all, it's all water weight. Yeah, yeah. Nice really guys, and in the end, uh, but a good point because Tim were last year, I think he lost, I think it was five to eight kilos at one point just from diet, just diet alone. Um, he wanted to lean down and um, yeah, he lost, I think it was five I mean, was people five will eight. find their own particular best playing weight. Yeah. It's a matter of can you keep that yeah. rather than in the warm up for a tournament losing a lot or during yeah. a tournament losing a lot. I think once Tim were lost, it was kind of like then he could maintain it. it just, he just want, need to give it a bit of a kick along the way. Yeah. I mean, it's fine to be a little bit lighter. Yes. But if that takes away your power and also yeah. takes away your sustainability to actually stay out there in the match, that's when there's an issue. It was down, wasn't it? Was it? I think Elijah shot was down Ooh. at cross court net. He's got the lead. I mean, that's, that's the problem. Well, not a problem, but you've, you're seeing things from a different angle from what yeah. you're seeing on court, aren't you? Yeah, there's so many different angles, um, especially in squash. And, I mean, it, and it's not what you're seeing at court level in the game, what you're seeing from this angle looking down is, you know, we, we are seeing different shots almost. Yeah, I think for me personally, everyone has a different preference, but I like to watch at the player's level, mm -hmm. um, especially watching the top squash. Watching right. the top squash, you get a much better idea. I feel, I feel when it's too high, you can't get a perception of the actual speed yeah, of yeah, play. That's, that's true. Um, and it just looks too simple. 
at a, at a well, higher level. That's the thing. On, on TV, you're seeing, or you know, online, you're seeing a rally, and you're not seeing that, that speed and where, how all the players are moving. Yeah. So Tim we're, Tim, we're trying to bring Forge a comeback here. 6-8. You've actually had the the measure of Elijah Thomas the last couple of times you played him. So yeah. you know, assuming on the scoreboard it's looked like you've managed to actually oh, oh he, he, he ran back into it. Yeah. Got himself back in and <laughs> I don't know what he was right. thinking there and he, you could see by his expression that he didn't know doesn't really know what he was doing either. Yeah. And uh, still having to wear the goggles for this season. Doesn't turn 19 until later on in the year. Elijah Thomas, all oh, the shot off the surf. Oh. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> so there we go, two points that he shouldn't have probably lost. So, Joel, do you want to explain a bit more in there? Um, so, what Elijah is accusing Timo of, um, that last point was a nice low skid cross court. So, when the ball skids in the cro on the on the squash court, especially out of the front, it just really it kicks along into the corners. Right. Impossible to play. Um, and what Elijah was saying is that Timo actually rubbed his sweat on the ball before the rally. Um, and that's where the confusion was. And Tim was saying, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to kick it up when I serve it? Yeah. Obviously implying that his hand was sweaty. Um, but they're, they're pretty sweaty. And it happens. I mean, it can also just, I mean, droplets of sweat on the court all the time with these guys, with, with the boys. And it can just hit a droplet of sweat and then skid as well. So it's not necessarily Tim was hand that's at fault or whatever, it's, you know. It's it just, just happens. It just happens sometimes, yeah, though. Yeah. It, is, it is a sweaty game. It is two sweaty players out there. I mean, also, like, some of the courts, if they don't get sanded properly as well, they're just naturally skiddy courts. Right, yeah. Not that these are, but it happens. Well, what uh, Gabe Yam was saying, uh, I think it was during your game, that you know, different the walls play different in different yep. places. Which, considering it's a wall, 100%. You know, it's, it's, a, it's one of those kind of weird things. How I, would argue, I would say that these are probably the most true walls. And is that? No, that's a finish. Okay, well, there you go. That was the first game, 11 8, and I think we've got to finish there. Yes, yeah, so I think. Um, okay, uh, well, we'll have uh, Tim, and, uh, Tim and Louis in the final. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I think there was a mention of a back problem, but it didn't say much. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't very happy. Yeah.